right, Bhupati. Let's hope it's better now. So we had stopped at the point where you said at the beginning of the revolution, there was space for dissent a little bit. Yeah. Even, and there was yeah. a counter yeah. movement in cinema. Right. Let's take it yeah. from there. Yes. There were issues. There were issues from the beginning, but uh, comparatively, uh, they had much uh, freedom and uh, much, uh, um, I mean, freedom to expression at the early 20s while Lenin was there. And obviously, uh, as most of you might know, uh, when Stalin was came into power, uh, there were a lot of restrictions. And uh, later on uh, in 1930s, uh, filmmakers like Sergio Meisenstein and a lot of filmmakers, they had to quit, uh, I mean, um, uh, go out of uh, Soviet Union and uh, uh, some of the, them went to Mexico and some of them went to Europe and they have to uh, disband uh, from the uh, their uh, authentic uh, involvement uh, with Russian uh, cinema movement. So anyway, uh, that was the start, I guess, uh, I mean, uh, in cinema as a movement, as a practice, uh, and uh, even uh, uh, team-wise, that was the, I mean, uh, uh, movement or the, uh, I mean, turning point that we can uh, mark uh, in as a resistance uh, in cinema, in cinematic history. And later on, there were many movements, especially I want to emphasize uh, Madhubashini, uh, that artists uh, have not only um, resist the uh, political uh, suppression or the uh, political contradictions uh, in the uh, history of art. They have uh, reacted to the um, ideological and institutional um, dominances in uh, uh, art itself also. Art itself. And we have a good example in drama where Sugata Pala Silva and uh, everyone resisted the yeah. Matame tradition. So it, it's very common yeah. in Sri Lanka as well. So you are saying in film yeah. also that happened globally. Definitely, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one of the uh, most famous movement I'm to uh, share with you is uh, that the uh, Latin American third cinema movement, third cinema movement, uh, which was led by a filmmaker called Fernando Solanas, very famous guy. And his son also now into filmmaking. He had a very radical revolutionary film called Upside Down. If you can watch it, uh, please try it. Uh, film title is Upside Down. It's a very political film. Uh, shot in, I mean, uh, screened in uh, 2012 or 13 something. So anyway, they, this movement, call, uh, I want to um, share with you that why they call this movement as third cinema, because they recognize both Hollywood and European art house cinema as mainstream dominant uh, power blocks. So they, uh, they uh, wanted to uh, recognize what as the most powerful uh, cinema one, and then the uh, counter movement uh, of uh, Hollywood, uh, which we recognize at Art House Cinema of Europe, also a dominant movement, uh, which uh, I mean, frame cinema as uh, so and so like this. And as example, there are many movements like uh, Italian neorealism in 1930s and 40s uh, and uh, French New Wave in uh, 1950s to 60s. There were many movements in Europe. And they made uh, some kind of, uh, I mean, they were very good films, very revolutionary and very uh, interesting and uh, uh, kind of uh, alternative cinema at that time, comparatively to European classical cinema. They have a lot of, um, I mean, uh, productive uh, uh, film movements at that time in Europe. But, but later on, uh, late 60s, uh, anyway, Latin American filmmakers in Argentina or Peru or somewhere, they recognize this European tradition of uh, alternative filmmaking all gradually becoming a kind of a dominant art form. So they wanted to resist it. That's why they uh, named and titled themselves and their movement as third cinema, third cinema, uh, which is uh, distinguished uh, from uh, both Hollywood and uh, European art house cinema. So it's uh, one of uh, major resistance cinema movement and still we have that kind of, uh, I mean, uh, cinema styles and narratives. Uh, there are filmmakers which still follow knowing unknowingly uh, they are uh, i mean inventions to cinema more the cinematic techniques what are the, the what are the uh, characteristics cinematic... yeah Bupati, what are the characteristics of what you call third cinema how did they fight against particular art forms how what was it like yeah as an example uh, madhubashini uh, we seek kind of a, a conventional and um, kind of traditional way of uh, photography in uh, classical Hollywood cinema. They have all the backlights and many, uh, overlit and uh, kind of, uh, I mean, uh, 3D lighting. So we have uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, terms and, I mean, terminology regarding uh, 
the photograph. Uh, was at the moment European cinema, which is kind of uh, immersion or reality, and uh, but in a kind of classic artistic, uh, which is from uh, traditional paintings. Bupati, Bupati, you'll yeah. have to repeat that because you're getting uh, your internet is a bit shaky. Let's do that again. Um, I'm uh, explain what third cinema is like slowly. Uh, yeah. You yeah. Do that uh, completely. Yeah. Yeah, so you asked about the uh, characteristics of the cinema, how we, we can distinguish it from European or Hollywood cinema. Uh, as an example, if we take a photographic sense, uh, if you take Hollywood, they have kind of, um, um, of lighting, backlight, front light, and there is a uh, kind of stereotype, not in each and every film, not in each and every film. But yeah, you can, uh, I mean, uh, recognize kind of a lighting style and lighting traditions. Uh, which is, uh, I mean, identical to uh, Hollywood uh, mainstream uh, American cinema. And uh, to counterpart that, we can find a much more artistic or much more, I mean, uh, simplicity, kind of a minimalistic lighting traditions in uh, uh, European art house cinema. If you take uh, uh, some classical filmmakers like Igmar Bergman from Sweden or Michelangelo Antonioni from Italy. Uh, so there are many classical filmmakers they have uh, kind of create some kind of a realistic and mostly with the uh, cinematic mood, uh, with the cinematic emotion, they have created different kind of a, uh, emotional way of uh, lighting uh, counterpart to Hollywood cinema. But uh, the movement uh, I particularly, uh, I mean, talking about, which uh, uh, third cinema in uh, Latin America, they rejected uh, both these uh, traditions, Madhubashini. They rejected uh, both classical uh, conventional type Hollywood lighting and at the same time art house lighting and they kind of shot like in amateuristic uh, ways. It, uh, almost like uh, they have not uh, not lit the uh, cinematic uh, cinematographic uh, set. Uh, almost like, uh, mostly like available lighting. So likewise, um, you and me at this mo very moment, uh, we are not using any kind of professional lighting methods to record this session. So it's very amateuristic and very natural. So they have taken that kind of radical aspects and radical approaches to uh, rewrite and to reproduce all the cinematic apparatus um, uh, languages and narratives. They have reproduced it in a different way. Likewise, you do in language. As, a, as an example, as you might know better than myself, likewise, uh, I mean, if you take someone like Ajit Kilakasena, he is kind of uh, radically struggling with the grammatical patterns and I mean, um, kind of, uh, I mean, well, yeah, he's maybe. one of the very few who fought against the form of language. It's exactly. common to, you know, fight against content. And in a way, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's easier to fight with content. But when you fight with the form, that needs enormous strength to dismantle the very structures which you might think natural. And Ajit yeah. did that. And I think Ajit also paid a price for it. Like he wasn't recognized yeah. as a award winner till about one year ago. Yeah. Because they completely shut him out because it's very threatening, yeah. no, Bhupati? It's a threat to have the form Definitely. challenge. Yeah. So how were yeah. the third wave uh, filmmakers uh, received by the world? Yeah, same thing, uh, same thing as you explained. They were not recognizable in awards and those institutional, I mean, even in a cinematic academia, they were highly rejected, but they were very confident about what they were doing. And uh, likewise, I, I, I hope that they have been influenced by the French New Wave also. Even in French New Wave, they used many, I mean, uh, filmmakers like um, Jean-Luc Godard or Francois Truffaut. I don't know whether I'm uh, pronouncing their names very correctly. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, they don't pronounce even our names very correctly. I, I, so, I, I'm clueless. I have no idea if they are doing <laughs> it correctly. Yeah, so uh, like uh, I said, they were fighting with... Uh, uh, conventional uh, French cinema, uh, comparatively, someone like uh, Jean Renova. Uh, they, uh, if you take uh, Jean Renova as a classical filmmaker, you can find many. Uh, as an example, they uh, took the uh, their uh, cameras to, uh, I mean, to their shoulder. They uh, started uh, shot it, uh, shoot uh, many things in handheld, and they were taking radical approaches. Uh, likewise. Uh, Jean Luc Godard shot. I can't remember the exact uh, the title. I remember uh, one uh, film uh, after the uh, Russian. Sorry, uh, uh, there was a very political and where uh, there was a very uh, activ activism type film by uh, Jean Luc Godard. The film was shot in a single room for two uh, two and a half hours. 
single room. They were planning, talking, and uh, political matters of Chinese Revolution and those things. And it was very someone might um, uh, find it very boring. I mean, kind of a political TV show. Likewise, they were talking, talking, talking. So they were uh, even in French Revolution. I want to emphasize they were trying and practicing um, to break the rules, uh, to uh, break the way of storytelling, uh, conventional storytelling, and they wanted to. I mean, separate cinema as a different uh, aesthetic practice, Madhubashini, especially from literature. They didn't want to uh, tell a story. I mean, uh, A to Z story, a narrative story. They were trying to uh, uh, give some uh, a cinematic experience to the audience, cinematic experience. So what I want to emphasize was that Madhubashini, with these two examples, with the uh, French New Wave and the, um, uh, the American third cinema, uh, that both the, uh, both of these both of these moves are fighting against aesthetic traditional aesthetic itself. They are resisting to the traditional aesthetic patterns. So I find it uh, very complex, Madhubani. I think it is much more deeper and it's much more veteran and it's much more revolutionary approach and it's much more harder and it's much more intellectual. You have to understand and you have to learn a whole set of. Um, Aesthetic tradition historically and its evolution in the, I mean, civilization. So if you, you have to be a veteran at uh, be, at its best to uh, break you, the rules, yeah, you I'm have to know the rules to break the rules. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bhupati, Bhupati, I'm going to ask you um, some things which might interest the listeners also. Was there something similar in India as opposed to Bollywood, and is there something similar in the USA as opposed to Hollywood, because in Sri Lanka, we are more used to seeing the centers sending us stuff like we know Hollywood, USA, Bollywood, India, that's, that's more what we see. But can you talk about those two countries because we're exposed very much to their art, even more than, you know, Mexico, Brazil, or even European film. We are hardly, the mass media hardly exposes us to them, right? And we see Hollywood and Bollywood mainly. Can you tell me whether there was a protest within those countries against mainstream media and ideology like this? Let's start with the USA, Bhupati. Yeah, thank you for asking a very valuable question, first of all. Yeah, it's very important to understand that because as you um, mentioned very correctly, these two are markets. I mean, basically, these two are very huge industries. Uh, so, uh, um, I mean, obviously, we are having an issue with uh, the, I mean, goal of the art. Yeah, of, of course, we can't uh, exactly mark uh, what kind of, a, I mean, intention that we are having once you do arts. Even artists uh, himself or herself might you know, have no idea. It's uh, very fragile or it's something very, I mean, uh, some kind of a, a subjective matter. You can't uh, uh, rationally, uh, uh, I mean, uh, mark something. This is uh, the reason that why I'm doing, making a film or something. It's impossible. But at the same time... But, but on the it, other hand, Bhupati, just to, just to interrupt yeah. her, for someone yeah. like somebody doing a very cookie-cutter plot in, like, say, Hollywood, then you know what you want. You want entertainment yeah. and you want, like, exactly. Marvel film. I, I doubt anyone thinks on those lines. They know exactly what they're doing. So, yeah. But maybe you're talking about serious. See, this is the thing. Post, post-modernism, you can't separate serious from entertainment. Exactly. No matter pop culture, you cannot, right? So yeah. I admit that, but still there are there are films in which the director clearly knows what he has to do. Yeah, like if I or you were to write the next Marvel movie, I mean, I, probably we can't, but we know exactly how the plot should move. Right? Yeah. So yeah. that's so let's let's. I'm very scared yeah, of the yeah, hierarchy is here, right? But that will yeah. be an entertainment movie. So yeah. in that sense, maybe what you just said is not quite valid. They know exactly what they are going to produce, yeah. right? Yeah. It's other the same, that you're the talking same time, about. But at the same time, uh, a screenwriter like uh, uh, Sid Feed, he is emphasizing at the same time that uh, even though we, uh, I mean, recognize them as one, know what they are doing, it can be a flop. It can be a failure. Uh, the best example is Waterworld. The best example is Waterworld in 1999. Yes. They were investing very much and they, uh, I mean, uh, made a huge campaign that this is the most expensive film uh, in the history and yeah. blah, blah, blah. That but was Kevin Costner, right? Who was the main yeah. 
yeah, and they yeah. got the like you know someone like him and still it failed yeah still it became a flop and at the same time like um, uh, wonder woman very recently <coughs> sorry uh, just after the uh, corona first wave uh, they were planning to uh, make some kind of uh, i mean uh, return uh, with all the uh, complexities they were faced uh, by the pandemic period but it became a flop it became a flop even you're right you're right that that can happen yeah. yes yeah that can happen but most of the time uh, you were correct they they know they have a plan they have a proper plan even the most recent jurassic world uh, film if you take they have a kind of i mean uh, the films uh, film which is uh, screened at the moment uh, uh, they have a kind of a very serious research on a previous jurassic park franchise i mean versions uh, they have already screened and they have uh, mastered uh, the weak points and they have overcome all these uh, weak points of earlier jurassic park versions and uh, as an example if you take the first jurassic park film you can't find any substance or a subplot with uh, the uh, protagonists uh, you you have a, you have two children and two adults but they are not a family but they have to act as a family to survive from the uh, the catastrophic uh, all the terrible things happen after the breakdown of the electricity in the jurassic park but you don't find anything i mean something substantial something uh, something about life something tricky about the i mean memory or something or uh, about their family you don't have a subplot in uh, jurassic park 1 a, a masterpiece which was done by spielberg but in the latest film latest version they have filled that gap they have made a subplot they have made, made a very emotional subtext uh, beyond the uh, all the dinosaurs there was a little child A little girl. No, don't tell the story. I haven't watched it yet, Bhupati. Don't tell the story. Do not spoil. Do not have spoilers. I I hope though they will stop getting women to run in high heels. Huh? Yeah. Every time I watch films as a woman, I'm like that can't happen. <laughs> you know, people running through <laughs> the jungle in high heels get. I'm like what? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but you you have to. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a uh, kind of a stereotype. I mean, presentation in mainstream Hollywood, obviously. So uh, going back to your, I mean, original question, there are the alternatives, and there are still there are alternative practices in Hollywood, uh, even in America. Uh, uh, most of the people who are not very aware of film studies, they recognize each and every American film as a Hollywood film, Madhubashini. But it's not true. It's not correct. Uh, what we recognize as hollywood cinema is uh, the films which produced by the major hollywood companies likewise uh, paramount uh, mgm universal those are the major blockbuster players and they are the dominant uh, uh, production houses and uh, distributors in the hollywood film american film industry but uh, beside that there are many alternative film producers and uh, distribution chains big functions very efficiently even inside the america these uh, they, these are not hollywood each and every american film is not an hollywood film hollywood is a kind of a certain particular uh, cinema practice which beyond to studio system of the major companies but that we call the alternative cinema in uh, uh, specialized to particularly in hollywood is b movies we call it b movies in film studies b movies there are film directors who avoid major hollywood practice and they uh, like to uh, join and they like to work with b movies producers and studios and Likewise, these studios and are physically distant i'm just trying to get my knowledge updated yeah. uh, bhupati these are yeah. different studios so they don't go into where no. normally hollywood movies are shot no. but no. they are in, in california different states also yeah yeah different places yeah. can be inside california also and maybe outside yeah so it doesn't yeah. matter and, right okay yeah uh, just i i like to mention two main directors uh, i mean who work with and uh, they have produced kind of a resistance cinema i mean which uh, you can't find easily in hollywood uh, film tradition uh, i want to uh, mention two names mainly one of my favorite two directors now one is very famous uh, Hello, can you hear me, Madhu Bhushan? Yeah, I hope you hear. Me. Yeah, yeah. I'm just fascinated. I'm just listening because I'm learning so much. Yeah, sorry, sorry, yes. sorry. You, you you were freezing. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah. listening very very intensely. <laughs> so yes, uh, one film director uh, which I uh, we uh, one of my favorites uh, is uh, Gus Van Sant. Gus Van Sant. He himself is a gay, openly gay, and he was fighting very much with the uh, uh, as an activist in LGBT movements, and he's the one who uh, shot and won Oscars. uh for uh, his uh, very famous film called milk 
about an LGBT activist. Uh, I can't remember the exact year. I mean, 2007 or 8. It won the best for Oscar for best film, and this was a very revolutionary film, which uh, he was able to uh, kind of, I mean, place this theme even inside uh, in the Hollywood mainstream cinema. And he have, uh, I mean, um, made films like Elephant, uh, uh, which was based on the theme that uh, high school shooting uh, in 2001, likewise, most recent incidents. Uh, it won the uh, Palm d'Or Award at the Cannes Film Festival. And um, the, there are many films done by him, uh, especially, uh, I mean, particularly regarding LGBT themes and outside LGBT. So he is not dealing with uh, the most of the time he is not dealing with the hollywood cinema and he's kind of a b movie very famous b movie filmmaker which is alternative and which is kind of a resistance to uh, hollywood mainstream uh, power block i mean that aesthetic, aesthetic regime we can um, uh, to um, quote some uh, philosopher like uh, 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 shark ranchia he's using using a term called aesthetic regime in a different uh, sense uh, but uh, in this sense, uh, industrial regime, they are functioning an uh, industrial it's regime. Regime is a very good word to use. Regime is about yeah. power and authority and, yeah, uh, and yeah. yeah, top down kind of. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Not only political politics, but you can find it in aesthetic. Uh, As I mean, well. uh, so what's your second yeah. director you were going to mention? Bupin? Second director was very, he is much famous, uh, Martin Scorsese, well known director, Martin Scorsese. Uh, he had been never awarded uh, in Oscars until. Uh, his uh, age of 70s, um, uh, 70. Uh, he uh, won Oscars, like, as I remember, only for uh, the film Departed. Uh, and it was a remake. It was a remake. It's kind of an insult for him, actually. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, so I just want to tell you this. So the B movies also get considered for Hollywood Oscars and all that. Yeah. Oscars. yeah. All the, yeah. they're open for any award that is given to anyone. Uh, yeah, officially it's open. Yeah, but uh, once you find uh, most of the time they give uh, much prominence to the major. Uh, I mean, uh, but they are recently after two thousands they had to. I mean, uh, uh, it's kind of a, I mean uh, victory. From yeah, the also, yeah, and also there is a pushback in Hollywood itself where women of yeah. color, women and others are saying this is too. Um, thing is that that argue that debate is going on in fiction as well, Bhupati. Uh -huh. It's publication uh -huh. where people are, uh, we'll get that lad because we're not doing literature now. Okay, in, in India, I know there are so many. Sorry, I, I want to mention, sorry, I forgot that yeah. very important another name to uh, once you be talking about American resistance cinema is Spike Lee. Spike Lee, because the, uh, I mean, ethnic uh, issue is very serious uh, until now with the uh, Floyd uh, issue also, and I mean, recently with the police and everything. So uh, Spike Lee was a uh, director uh, who started filmmaking in 19, late 1970s, and uh, still he's a very fascinating and very important director regarding black issues. And he's, uh, I, I like him as a filmmaker because he is addressing at the mainstream, uh, I mean, ethnic issue in the America, and at the same time, he's addressing the internal contradictions of the uh, black community itself as a black filmmaker. Uh, so very, that's very important uh, to have uh, an internal critique uh, among the fighters. I mean, we can be in the same team, we can be in the same boat, but we have to keep the internal critique, like Mao Zedong, at least he emphasized it in the theory, uh, we, though we have many uh, questions about his practice. I mean, uh, that is something very important with the communist tradition, I guess. Um, I mean, uh, something we have to learn. The openness to, uh, as you take uh, uh, Vladimir Lenin's writing, I mean, uh, if you take 70% of his writings, he's, uh, uh, he's a kind of an internal critic to his own communist society. Not about the capitalist society. But about as, as you say, what we remember is the fact that it wasn't carried out in practice. Maybe not yeah, so much in it. So exactly. that, exactly. yeah, you know, theoretically yeah. we can say let's be tolerant. I mean, we can yeah. take religion, for example, Bhupati, let's not get there either. But Buddhism yeah. is about tolerance, but what is happening in practice here? At the moment, let's let's yeah. not get there, let's not get there. But yeah. what I'm saying is what is in theories may not be in practice. Tell me the Indian situation, Bhupati, because I know... There are a lot of provincial yeah. cinemas that don't, don't, we don't even know in Sri Lanka. But how yeah. much is how much pushback is there against Bollywood, against or as opposed to? Yeah. 
definitely yeah uh, again the same scenario uh, goes with the uh, indian cinema i guess uh, the sad thing was once you comes to indian cinema we recognize um, uh, uh, bollywood cinema as the indian cinema total indian cinema sad even if you take bollywood madhubashini as an industry usually they uh, produce uh, uh, to uh, nearly 250 films per year at the moment nearly before the pandemic nearly 250 bollywood films not hindi films not each and every hindi film is recognized as bollywood films again same scenario there are particular dominant film companies who produce major uh, stardom stardom quality film star i mean uh, star quality star based cinema that you what, what you call stardom cinema so uh, that cinema what we recognize as bollywood cinema but beside that there are many alternative practices even in hindi language cinema as an example there was an hindi new wave and uh, started mostly with the most famous film directors like um, anurag kashyap uh, who shot uh, who made uh, films like uh, uh, girl in yellow boots uh, uh, gangs of wasipur there were many films uh, he was used to uh, shoot films in sri lanka also films like bombay velvet uh, so uh, with that move especially with that moment even before that there were women filmmakers women filmmakers like meera nair deepa mehta they were addressing uh, uh, consciously very taboo issues very taboo issues uh, like uh, i mean um, uh, they and all fire yeah also you like yes yeah kama sutra fire water uh, they were very controversial and they had to leave the country and they lo- lose lost their uh, even lo- they lost their citizenship Amira Nair uh, used to live in uh, America in now and Deepa Mehta in Canada at the moment they had to uh, leave the country uh, due to the very bad uh, experiences um, they had especially as women filmmakers but i want to emphasize they were very i mean uh, they had a strong courage they were very strong as women filmmakers even films like bandit queen uh, they, they those films they they you in they were not babies and were not childish they know that uh, this film going to be banned and this going to be this film going to be uh, uh, i mean uh, some, uh, huge resistance from the society and it is um, kind of a resistance practice in film i mean uh, they knew they know it they knew it and at the same time they doing it it has a resistance and it has a i mean political activism uh, other than propaganda films they were addressing deep i mean uh, uh, social issues and cultural issues issues in uh, conventional indian tradition yeah, and, and and i can imagine without again going deep into it the yeah. the danger of going against the grain in india can have huge repercussions much more than it's a matter, matter of uh, life and death. like yeah. can easily be i want to get to some other uh, another like korean k pop yeah. k drama it's it's becoming yeah, yeah. a worldwide phenomenon and honestly rightly so they do it so attractively and then yeah. we have things like parasite also that yeah. cuts sharply into would tell me the korean scene bopati before we come to sri lanka because i find it fascinating and i i do watch k dramas quite a lot and yeah actually i do teach asian cinema uh, module uh, for 30 hours in uh, sri pal university so uh, i can extensively talk about this is my i mean even professionally it's my subject but i'll uh, condense it as much as i can uh, uh, korean cinema was uh, i mean very interesting uh, you don't find uh, i mean hardly you find any uh, once you uh, talk about korean cinema there were two koreans i mean north korea and south korea but you hardly find uh, cinema in north korea other than propaganda cinema i mean before uh, 1970s uh, you don't find any filmmaker in later there there aren't any cinema at all in north korea but once you consider south korea before 1990s before their reformations with the american uh, i mean uh, i mean officially i mean uh, those uh, agreements and everything uh, economic uh, i mean understandings with i mean economic uh, Uh, conjunction with the american uh, uh, economic trade i mean economic uh, policies uh, there were huge openness to alternative cinema in korean cinema filmmakers like im kwan tak or uh, again a uh, young, much younger filmmaker like who uh, recently passed away with unfortunately with uh, pandemic with i mean um, uh, corona uh, filmmaker like kim ki dak he is a very i mean fighting and uh, kind of very resistance uh, i mean he is an iconic resistance filmmaker in korea 
he was addressing all the utterly, uh, utterly powerful eye and utterly easterly yeah. i mean yeah. it's stunning and even the the stories i i see what you mean and that's one of the saddest deaths all deaths are sad but but a lot yeah. for the art world yeah especially, especially for film goers yeah film lovers yeah okay. yeah 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 so uh, he is uh, he's, well, he was pressing kind of a extreme alternative and resistance in cinema uh, in korea uh, he had all most no uh, commercial film screenings he was mostly based on i mean survived by the festival circuit i mean all the international exposure with ex- in, um, international film sales and everything only uh, he got survived as a filmmaker in side korean i mean commercialized cinema uh, but uh, later on uh, as you mentioned uh, with all the uh, korean uh, tv traditions were i mean a price of the uh, korean tv traditions and uh, the attention they took all around the world Uh, as a um, huge market especially in east asia and uh, somewhat in south asia uh, filmmakers fa- found this is as a challenge and they again fought uh, filmmakers like um, sorry the one who uh, i i don't remember the exactly park chan wook a filmmaker like park chan wook uh, he is a, a major filmmaker in uh, korean new wave we called uh, after the uh, new tradition after the 90s uh they were struggling to make some kind of a postmodern cinema uh, as a resistance uh, again to this uh, market oriented uh, stereotype uh, narratives uh, which was uh, i mean uh, rising uh, inside the korea so they made some kind of a i mean postmodern type in between cinema like uh, uh, similar to uh, someone like uh, uh, quentin tarantino in america in, in uh, hollywood and they were highly influenced by filmmakers like uh, martin scorsese i remember the uh, uh, once uh, Par- parasite film uh, uh, was receiving the oscars he was thanking to uh, especially to martin scorsese and said he was glad and he was honored to be nominated uh, with martin scorsese at the same um, award ceremony so he was uh, giving his tribute to martin scorsese and at that time also at that speech also uh, he was mentioning that uh, Uh, martin scorsese and this uh, new american trend uh, was an icon and they they followed it actually to uh, build a new uh, wave in korean uh, film tradition beyond uh, conventional art house cinema in korea which was centered with uh, kim ki duck and few other makers yeah um bubuli how was that received in korea itself because korean like k pop has a huge following even in korea were they received with yeah. equal rest like people like parasite what did koreans feel i might not know whether you know the answer to this how was it received in korea itself they became very successful they became they, very yeah I they see, became very successful they resent yeah. you can easily resent the fact that a different layer of korea is being exposed to the world no and you know this yeah. this this argument also goes to why are you showing the underbelly like you know you should have a this kind of argument also can happen how were they received in korea itself yeah they were managing and uh, some of them were doing real with block the things and everything uh, because uh, gradually uh, they were able to uh, go uh, to make a narrative and a narrative structures and new flavors in cinema even in many genres which was very famous inside i mean as an example uh, vampire films and uh, the living dead films were very famous in uh, inside korea and uh, thriller and uh, suspense uh, genres are uh, having very and, and i think also i think it. also historical films no with their yeah, traditional periodical, periodical, period, yeah. periodical they are very very because i i'm i'm right now caught to the, that genre <laughs> i really I like see. it Yes, so yeah. those yeah, are the mostly, ones. Once you come to cinema, uh, Madhubashini, uh, mostly with uh, thriller and suspense genres were success inside the uh, Korean cinema. And filmmakers like him, um, uh, Park Chan Wook, were able to create uh, some kind of a cinema in between. In Sri Lanka, what as uh, something uh, much similar to uh, uh, which uh, Sri Lankan film critics were used to uh, use a term like uh, Madhama Avate cinema. Uh, to which the premier and uh, maybe wasanto besegaro sorry not for wasanto besegaro i can remember let's come to sri lanka can... now prabhupati let's come to sri lanka now that we did uh, yeah. the rest of the world let's let's yeah. do the sri lankan yeah. yeah uh how can you mean um, uh, let's basically... go a little bit back before madhavavate cinema let's go to yeah. our traditions and get there well, yes. yeah yeah yeah. So, like, yeah basically 
uh, uh, I won't. What is considered yeah. like, for example, I know in the literature genre, Gamperel yeah. is considered the novel that made the the fiction form come of age, right? What is the, kind of exactly exactly? And uh, what is the equivalent in cinema? Pupati, where did we start? I mean, we we had. I want you to refer to that also. We had very close link with Tamil Nadu, right? The Tamil and yeah. the Sinhala cinemas had absolutely close roots at the beginning. Can we go yeah. from there and come to the present, please? Yeah, mostly uh, Madhubashini, uh, they have, uh, I mean, uh, production-wise, industry-wise, we had much connections with uh, Tamil Nadu. But, uh, I mean, uh, as an influence, uh, again, we uh, our early cinema was much more influenced by the uh, Hindi cinema, I guess. Uh, Hindi cinema was influenced by some other world traditions and uh, likewise uh, a lot of links. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, uh, to count uh, uh, the first resistance cinema, I think again, uh, popularly we have what we marked as Lester Swekava and then Dharmasena Patraja's Ahasgawa. Uh, and rarely we mark uh, someone like Dharmasena Bandha, uh, not in each and every text, but I think it's a turning point. Uh, sexually, I mean, Hansa Vilak, yeah. Uh, while uh, the, most of the filmmakers were dealing with the, the mansions and the, uh, I mean, um, all these, uh, I mean, uh, feudal uh, themes like Les James Pierce, and none of them were dealing with the urban, I mean, middle class, so uh, uprising, I mean, uh, urban, uh, expanding middle class, and um, uh, mostly governors, uh, civil servants. Uh, they have a lack of themes in uh, Sri Lankan cinema in, uh, once you come to uh, early 80s. Uh, and uh, Dharmasiri was able to fill that gap, I think, uh, with um, uh, especially with uh, Tungin Yame and Hansa Vilak. Uh, so he addressed um, a novel, I mean, approach. Um, he took a novel approach, and at the same time, Vasanto Besekar. He was doing the same thing, and again, with the language of the cinema, he was uh, trying so hard to make a kind of a, a visual and, uh, I mean, sight and sound, basically, audio visual, experimental uh, storytelling uh, with its uh, cinema practice. So uh, there are a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, we can find a kind of a resistance in theme wise, likewise, I mentioned earlier in Sri Lankan cinema. But uh, Madhubashin, I want to emphasize uh, in Sri Lanka, we rarely see kind of a alternative practice of cinema uh, inside the country uh, in uh, Sri Lankan film industry. I want to emphasize two examples, two rare examples. Uh, which was uh, trying to uh, practice kind of alternative art form, uh, especially uh, in a, a sector like cinema, which was dealing with huge capital. Definitely you have to, uh, unlike uh, literature, unlike painting, uh, you have a kind of a basic investment of the of a huge capital to cinema to be, make a basic film, uh, minimally like um, three to four million at the moment. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, at the moment we can make a, uh, even the simplest film with three, four million. I mean, uh, it'll be definitely 10 million. So uh, anyway, uh, I want to, uh, I, there are a real uh, two alternative or two uh, resistance uh, filmmakers who practice, tried alternative film practice in Sri Lankan history. Uh, one was uh, obviously Ashoka Handagam. He challenged the circuit cinema style. I mean, uh, the, the traditional, if you make a film, you have to definitely find a circuit to distribute it. And you have to screen it in a proper commercial film theater. Other than uh, no one will recognize you as a filmmaker. It is the only institutional only, I mean, uh, productional um, production wise, I mean, um, uh, format, you have to screen the film. Likewise, you, if you are publishing, a, I mean, a book, but uh, in, once you come to literature, you can uh, make it as an uh, author's, I mean, publication, no, own, own publication. Literature is definitely possible Different. for independent yeah. movement simply because it doesn't cost that much. Of course, now it does, yeah. but you yeah. don't have to but depend on it. others so much. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But once like, you come to cinema, but also uh, you just, just to add, add Bupati, but it depends very much on who the publication, who the publisher yeah. is for your trajectory of where the book then goes. It, yes. Right. It's much more complex, but uh, it, um, I mean, it's worse, uh, much worse once you come to cinema, uh, because uh, a filmmaker uh, might, uh, I mean, mostly, rarely own a cinema, un un unless someone like Budi Kirti said, his father having a cinema complex, luckily, so he, at least he have a single theater, 
but none of the other filmmakers they don't own a theater their own theater it's impossible it's a huge investment and it's a huge i mean a business which you are uh, artist yeah you mentioned artist. two people and one you said ashoka handagama who is ashoka handagama the film was mema ge sandai uh, he uh, he uh, was able to screen it in an alternative way like a theater play he he is going to book a certain i mean uh, theater uh, it's not a proper probably it's not a professional film theater there were times uh, he uh, i mean able to book a professional film theater also but there were only two or three screenings per day only a single day so it's going to be published and then people will come to uh, what in a particular time as you go for a um, yeah. theater play or a play likewise so uh, it was success he was managed to i mean collect some something in return he gained something and uh, then the film was uh, how i wonder what you are uh, was directed by two directors uh, chintana dharmadasa and udaya dharma vardhane they didn't screen uh, that film it's a uh, i mean feature length film uh, as i remember uh, one and a half hour so a uh, little more uh, they uh, was able to uh, screen it in a really alternative way and it shot in digi- digital the copy was in digital as so much more easier than ashoka handagama uh, ashoka handagama's film was 35 mm in film cans so it's much harder you have to carry a professional uh, film projector it's much uh, it's a harder job Uh, so once you come to digital it's mu- it's much more easier so chintan and udev was able to uh, with the help of the some uh, uh, i mean uh, embassies the french embassy german embassy and even uh, alternative film clubs all around the country outstation ratnapura kurnagala jaffna everywhere they uh, kept it as a free film screening sometimes it was ticketed but uh, i think it was not ticketed because legally Uh, no one can uh, make a ticket out uh, without uh, the uh, proper uh, i mean uh, i mean uh, with the uh, it has a tax to be paid no to the municipal yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that without uh, the involvement of the film corporation no one can film no one can screen a film with ticket uh, as a ticketed screening so definitely if so they have to uh, again they are trapped into the uh, typical uh, film circuit uh, sector so they were uh, able to uh, produce it and they were able to uh, make the film screening freely uh, but i think i recognize these two practices are and, and how did they film did they have a what was the what was the platform in which they showed it different platforms uh, different i mean uh, they were the screening outdoor screenings uh, places like uh, bakery uh, space in balvara uh, okay. and uh, uh, ymbas uh, many i mean lot of spaces sometimes in cultural centers like candy alliance uh, or the gerte institute or somewhere uh, and in festivals there were many festivals in sri lanka at that time so in uh, french festival european festival and some other festivals uh, curators like anoma rajakaruna and some uh, the uh, i mean programmers they i mean they were helping them and they were taking the screening and it was a kind of a real alternative practice and it was kind of a real resistance to resistance to uh, i mean authoritarian and dominant uh, film distribution chain in sri lanka so those are the kind of real aesthetic resistance i see i mean real aesthetic practices especially these two ashoka handagam and udaya dharma ardhan and chintana dharma das they are the one, I, I i see they are the pioneers of uh, uh, aesthetic pra- resistance practice in sri lankan cinema and even uh, prasanna vitanage i want to mention prasanna vitanage his documentary called uh, uh, usavi ani handai it is kind of a uh, political resistance uh, uh, i mean kind of a i mean reaction to a uh, political reaction to uh, sri lankan uh, justice system uh, questioning the justice system very deeply and it was uh, banned and it was uh, taken to court again it was based on a real incident right of yeah. injustice so yeah yeah basically based on by the uh, book written by the big tyvan uh, with an uh, i mean uh, kind of alternative research so uh, big tyvan was taking part inside the film as a commentator and uh, recently also it was screened that the a uh, gota gogama uh, theater uh, called uh, tear gas cinema kind of a real uh, alternative resistance uh, film space so um, these are the uh, i mean most important but out of these uh, there are uh, kind of uh, resistance practice in cinema again which has uh, similar to indian filmmakers uh, which uh, filmmakers were knowingly they knew 
and that this kind of a particular theme in this kind of a particular period we can be challenged but they managed to shot in and they had the courage uh, to screen it likewise prasanna uh, vitanagesh pura hamba kaluwar at that time he had to go to courts and he had to i mean uh, um, uh, stay for uh, two or three years uh, he had to delay his screening it was a real production issue and at the same time ashoka handagama stani tapi when pi amban regarding gender issue uh, those are real uh, resistance i mean kind of a reaction aesthetic reactions uh, to social taboos in sri lanka those films but, also yes. madhavati what was the madhavati cinema that you were referring to where does it fall in this context yeah it's kind of i mean uh, very i mean uh, very tricky <laughs> in a way uh, because uh, once you come to a serious matter so critical themes or taboo themes it's uh, as i mentioned uh, once you come to cinema since it is dealing with a huge capital and huge industry uh, a producer might become a, might fall into a huge risk with this kind of a theme so some directors uh, becoming uh, so tricky uh, earlier in 80s they were trying to uh, deal with uh, controversial themes in a uh, traditional narration or a traditional i mean uh, in a basket i might say yeah um, of all the uh, alternative and radical stuff in a traditional basket so uh, likewise uh, the ideal example is uh, hd premaratna has he was labeled as the uh, uh, cinesit uh, magazine uh, critics of cinesit magazine they labeled uh, Uh, it's a i mean in a positive way i i mentioned in a positive way it's a wonderful label a wonderful title as madhavavati cinema uh, likewise you find now very differently in mainstream hollywood cinema uh, because they want to de- uh, gain something in financially also so they have to uh, take some um, uh, popular i mean even an actor or a popular narration popular theme uh, might be an popular issue so you can uh, put it uh, you are all the alternative and political ideologies into that framework and present it in a much more creative way to uh, gain the attention also so there give are an example bhupati in Sing- singhala cinema give me an example of what you mean uh, a lot of examples by um, uh, hd Pre- especially later hd premaratna as an example sailama sailama uh, i uh, think it's in early 90s screen play was yeah screenplay was done by uh, uh, late uh, simon navagattegam a very veteran writer and very creative uh, screen writer also i mean I, i should say very creative screen i writer. would i would put him among the best if not the best one of the best we ever produced as literature literature wise yeah singhala fiction yeah very imaginative and uh, very i mean a vast range of uh, i mean creative stuff uh, he has done uh, one of my favorite is shira sagare and i think Uh, it's going to be in a film uh, i think uh, sunil aryaratna has shot the film and it will be in screen i don't know whether it is it might get a huge critique also <laughs> because most of the literature people they don't like to uh, uh, spoil their uh, imaginative i mean uh, limitless uh, that's a, that's another discussion uh, huge issue, yeah because Likewise, i have a uh, huge problem with the lord of the rings for example my goodness uh-huh. like you know i'm saying don't touch the book the, the book is you know mythic. <laughs> it's mythic you can't touch it so anyway that's another another argument yeah, huge, yeah, yes. another theme uh, we might better do it in another day yeah yes. li- uh, the relationship between literature and cinema so yeah. likewise uh, i mean uh, 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 while being a uh, i mean uh, Uh, literature personality uh, uh, i want to uh, mention it as a screenwriter also uh, navagatta gama was able to uh, uh, understand and recognize the uh, i mean identical i mean uh, difference uh, of cinema uh, the cinematic language also i personally i find himself as a very i mean uh, creative and talented screenwriter also which really uh, rec- recognizing i mean uh, so i had i know. had not thought of it yeah please go through yeah now that you tell me he's a good screenwriter yes probably because yes, Selyama, and also but simon himself had a huge critique about the film itself uh, they were having arguments uh, in public also darmasri bandaran the director and the writer they were arguing about um, uh, uh, i can remember one interview the title was in divina newspaper i guess 
he was criticizing Dharma series approach to the Nava his screenplay, and he was saying this is not the film is not Suddhi Lagi Katawa, Ekadang Suddhi Katawa Vilagi. That was his critic to the film. So kind of a I mean uh, narrow down. He found it as a narrow down. So anyway. Uh, so not I symbolic, but about... personal. But that, that's such a fascinating thing. If we were to discuss how you yeah. can turn symbolic Compare. into how you, you know, I don't know whether films can be symbolic, but again, this is a different discussion. Right, yeah, fascinating. You... Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Continue. Uh, so, uh, uh, so I just wanted to mention there was a, uh, I mean, kind of a medieval practice, I mean, midway practice among the filmmakers in Sri Lanka also. And uh, let me mention the Hollywood uh, uh, condition also at the same time parallel to this uh, Madhubashini. Filmmaker like Christopher Nolan, uh, especially the one who shot a recent Batman series trilogy, not recent actually, uh, in um, 2010 or something, uh, the Dark Knight, Dark Knight series, and uh, the, the, I mean, the films like uh, Tenet, and uh, films like uh, Interstellar, and films like... Uh, and even uh, some films like uh, Joker, uh, uh, while it's uh, receiving the Golden Lion at the Venice Film Festival, and while it is uh, winning the uh, Oscars, and at the same time it became the block, it became a blockbuster. And it's a very dark movie. Even visually, it's very dark and very, I mean, I mean, um, very, um, I mean, kind of a tragic story, which have no uh, uh, mainstream stereotype elements. And he is not a, that kind of a very famous, uh, I mean, very uh, lovable actor. Also. He's a very controversial actor. I mean, Jack in Phoenix, if you take Jack in Phoenix, he is not Leonardo DiCaprio, obviously. He is a very different alternate. So, but uh, there are recent there trend, like you mentioned earlier, with the postmodern uh, tradition of art practices, uh, in, especially in cinema, uh, filmmakers like, Ken, um, um, filmmakers like uh, Quentin Tarantino, uh, from Hollywood and filmmakers like Christopher Nolan and from Korea like um, Park Chan Wook and uh, from uh, even from Japan and even from India like um, uh, if you take even from India like uh, 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 the one who, who mentioned earlier um, uh, Anurag Kashyap there are a lot of filmmakers who are taking this two way path taking the addressing the very serious philosophical uh, themes uh, from cinema at the same time keeping a kind of attention and a mainstream narrative cinema at the same time. So this is also a kind of a protest. As an example, let me mention one thing. Uh, once uh, Christopher Nolan's wife, she is the producer of the film, uh, she was uh, taking the uh, I mean project to, uh, uh, once she was uh, taking the idea of the project to Christopher Nolan, that Warner Brothers are interested about uh, Batman series directed by Christopher Nolan, he said, no, I'm not going to direct it because I don't want to uh, fulfill uh, their uh, requirements. So I'm not going to direct it. First of all, he rejected it. But why first concerning and uh, convincing him, let me know what, what, are, what are your requirements. So I'll make, uh, I mean, then conv I'll convince them, Warner Brothers, and come back to you. So tell, uh, let me know what list of uh, requirements you need. So he was uh, mentioning a single requirement, single requirement. He said, I want to take yellow out of Batman logo. Will they love that? Will they love that? <laughs> and the producer, lady producer, actually his wife, was able to do that. And then only, I mean, both um, copyright owners and Warner Brothers producers and both uh, comic, comic book owners, uh, he was so radical and it was a huge radical turn in Batman. I mean, he was managed to changed the color of the Batman logo for his film, for a major blockbuster film in Batman. And it was a huge industrial, uh, I mean, radical change, although they have to take the copyrights from um, Disney, sorry, not Disney, uh, DC Comics. DC Comics are the owners and Warner Brothers are a totally different company. So here they have to deal with two major companies and uh, convince them. So this is the alternative, I mean, midway, even in mainstream, they are practicing and they are resisting. They are demanding in a new way for their creativity. So I really respect and I really love, I'm a huge fan of Christopher Nolan, so what he practicing in Hollywood um, while being among the mainstream Hollywood studios. 
so i suggest i suggest local filmmakers to try out because we are having a lack of uh, audience in sri lanka uh, we are struggling with the film industry with as in audience i mean audience gathering so i i hope uh, uh, not myself but i hope some filmmaker will touch this um, i mean new tradition of filmmaking uh, with you can fight with the both philosophical and serious matter and at the same time mainstream uh, i mean statistics yes because um, i think again see this goes into very many other things like what has i always look at you know south korean k dramas and think you know that's a revenue earner right bupati yeah if only we use our art we have so much talent you know we don't use it as a revenue earners it doesn't yeah. have to be only tea rubber even that doesn't turn no. up. but cricket. we have art cricket yes thank god at least we have that <laughs> why don't we use art as a yeah. revenue earner yeah. earner we have talent no and it breaks my heart to like put our tvs on and see indian and also not the best some of the worst tele dramas coming right <laughs> sorry so i think we should we have so many good musicians we have so many good artists why are we not investing so that this can be then a revenue earner just like every yeah, and, and one thing look at korea i mean i'm sure we that, don't have that money but still but, you know sorry go ahead bupati one thing to add uh, to your list uh, yeah. madhubashini what is lack come on sri lankan film industry once you consider the film industry i think lack of uh, from my profession i know uh, the lack of uh, screen writers there are aren't any professional screen writers in sri lanka if some director want to i mean he if he is not a writer he have name me single screen writer even i am not a professional screen writer i do work only with few right no professional screen writers in sri lanka i don't know but nobody i don't know as a as a writer i am not sami mean, has yeah. this call being made have directors come out and said give us scripts have you all yeah. asked for it yes 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 Unfortunately, do. I don't know the exact reason. We don't have any professional. We have writer directors, very creative. Prasanna Vithana ke Ashok kahan dega ma? They all are writer directors. Shamira Nao too na. Some some youngsters. Ah, these are Imbula na Malaka Valley, Malaka Deva Priya. All of them are very good writers. But at the same time, we need in India. They have a prof. They are professional dialogue writers. They separate those three two lives also professionally. Ah, uh, screen writers separately. Uh, and uh, dialogue writers were separately they see dialogue writing as a profession it's uh, i mean uh, something different from screen writing so that much of a i mean vast range of practices in industries in even in uh, korea as you mentioned so we need screen writers i guess it's a huge lack in fa- because that's where the film starts no with the storytelling with a powerful story you exactly. know i hope i hope the writers who listen to this now get it because we have we have writers coming out quite a lot bupati like if you take the english in literature in, world, literature. in literature but now that you made the call i mean i'm sure yeah. i'm sure some of the young people can heed the call probably and yeah. hear it because when you write a novel you visualize it anyway you know you know what the character is all there right so um it's very important that I hope they hear this call because yeah. from a now it's a very different. Because I don't culture. have uh, you yeah. should, uh, Madhubashini. I don't have personally. I don't have this high art and low art uh, yes. separation. Yes. No one. I think now. As an example, as an example, up here, Mal Sindhu, Mal Kala, we kill again. I don't. Unfortunately, I don't remember the name. I'll try to. Uh, I mean. Uh, so that's the entertainment genre, no? The romantic genre. Yeah. That's and how they're... K-pop and K-dramas are yeah. going to the world. It's so. Yeah, TV drama. It's so. Yeah, in Sri Lanka. Yeah, in Sri Lanka, uh, the uh, I mean uh, popular novelist tradition. Likewise, I mean, how uh, are famous novelists? I don't. Gorno Hadavat, Karuna Sena Jayalal. No, 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 no you know. not Gorno Hadavat. The recent, most recently, uh, are a name. I don't remember uh, the exactly name. Uh, uh, the one who uh, write maybe I mean in a very romantic and so called way. Devani ni mas kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, the kind yeah. of the yeah. minimum yeah. kind thing. Yeah. So they uh, usually uh, all the uh, art house people they undermine them like Malpatra Karyo, uh, Malgita Karyo. Likewise, they undermine them as low art. But they, uh, they, one of them wrote a screenplay as Angelica, directed by Channa Pereira. I'm uh, really sorry, I don't remember the screenwriter's name. I found it as a very kind of funny, funny, because it was very romantic uh, and. Uh, 
it was very working really good uh, i mean actually also talk about topic again uh, bhupati again i think your hand off the mic because again you are being uh, can you mean that can you yeah better yes yeah. also just to just to go back to this entertainment mal mal katha thing golu yeah. haruna sena jalat made the best novels for some of the most successful films that singha yeah. cinema ever had you know and gehanu yeah. lamai these were all novels no and, and at that time that karna ja so lame as he looked at me exactly exactly I, yeah i personally have collected of reviews for james spirit to other so most of the uh, most of the uh, critics were criticizing lester why did you choose this kind of a cheap uh, novel but i i would like to suggest singhala readers to read this book i i just have uh, now also at the on my table uh, this is uh, this is a wonderful analysis by chandana silva veteran film critic uh, please find this book unfortunately not in market cinema rasavindana this whole book is about golu hadavata film it is a comparison of liter uh, i suggest this to you also madhubashini personally the topic we discussing a few weeks ago he was comparing the difference between the novel and the film the literature version and the uh, cinematic approach especially sumitra peeris uh, uh, approach and the uh, other editors approach to the i mean uh, editing i mean the whole editing work out uh, of the uh, golu adavata film the change of the narrative structure lester has taken uh, rather than um, uh, uh, karuna sena jayala so right. these are the uh, these are radical practices even lester had the courage uh, to work with a very popular and so called low art uh, while he was having a prestige uh, high art identity he was he, it is uh, thank you for mentioning that uh, madhubashini I, i personally think golu also but also is as was a kind of a resistance film resistance to high art by lester so it's wonderful oh, and i and, really and, and he was lucky to have you know came that's like the music yeah and, 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 and I, i want to mention who wrote the screenplay who wrote the screenplay regi sirivar a member of the uh, i mean um, central committee of the communist party of samasamaja party of sri lanka and a bilingual uh, intellectual and a high theoretical and uh, marxist critic in sri lanka he wrote the golu hadavata script he was he was not having those high art and low art things he uh, uh, if you take in sri lanka local language are uh, penny film ek very romantic and very loving film they were able to produce the as a team lester sumitra uh, karuna sena jayala regi sirivardana what a combination what a combination yeah, and and kema das put that team also kema das what a combination yeah, what huge a combination huge different traditions huge different practices they have all come together and prove and prove that cinema is an collective art and with uh, with that collectiveness they have made a wonderful resistance to local high art tradition i want to mention especially was very powerful at that time uh, sarachandra edirvira sarachandra's discourse edirvira sarachandra was the pioneer of that high art low art discourse he wrote kalpana loka and he was uh, marginalizing all the popular art stuff and there was a peradeniya had... school also no peradeniya school was also peradeniya gurukul yeah yes peradeniya yeah. school i also want to mention because we mentioned kemadas remember kemadas one of the first people to say jyotipala jyotipala was yeah a really like he immediately cancelled the jyotipala was yeah. you know music wise who who did to the low category yeah. but kemadas he we said no this yeah. is one of the Plus best I, as i know plus i have uh, heard that, that uh, he have meant, um, uh, named uh, milton malavarachi also he have commented on milton malavarachi yes. but jyoti pala was yeah. the name for this not our music kind of low yeah. and then he immediately said no this is one of the best singers we have so again another interesting conversation bhupati let's get to you now personally yeah. and yeah. particularly let's get i'm going to screen share and um, get to the is dakala purudu kene your first film bhupati like let's get to dakala purudu kene till i find ways to share the screen here yeah you continue talking till i figure yeah. it out uh, actually uh, uh, i was trying to uh, become a director madhubashini at first of all then later on i saw my colleagues and my friends uh, how uh, how hard they dedicate and uh, how hard they work on their films 
So later on, I decided to. I am. I am much more lazier, and uh, I decided to quit. Quit out of uh, directing. Uh, it, it's much more hard, and uh, you need much courage, and you need much dedication to become a film director in Sri Lanka. So, uh, uh, seriously, I'm lazier to that. I'm much into books, and I'm much into readings. So I decided to become a screenwriter, and we were struggling for. I mean, nearly for twenty years to uh, make a film in Sri Lanka. It's really hard to. Become a filmmaker in Sri Lanka, especially your debut film. So uh, luckily, with my friend, a uh, good friend, Malit Hagoda, I was able to uh, make our uh, debut feature film. I have done several films with Nadia Bimanera, a uh, one-shot film called uh, uh, Matanang Ahuna. Uh, English title is While You Slept. It's in YouTube. If someone interested, you can watch it online. And there's another film called Fourth of February, short film. It's a documentary film. Uh, again it was directed by nadia perera it's also available in youtube so i invite you to it's a short film about migration labor uh, i was a, i was a co-writer for both these short films nadia and myself are writers but once you come to the feature film um, malit is not interested about, about writing and i took the story and i, I uh, brought the story and uh, we made our first film dakala purudu kenek and i uh, get the english um... thing also up here yeah. um bupati i let's talk about this i can't seem to open the english can you see this english poster no uh, i can see the singhala poster okay. family yeah family right. photo this technology is um yeah. Ah, yeah. actually film uh, uh, film the same first... family right yeah strange family in english oh. yeah and of course it's a singhala uh, movie and i wanted to i i watched it because i when i talk with people i either read an essay or you uh, know research on a work by them and i picked this one and uh, i think what the way the poster also has captured it is the complete captivity of a woman within the institution of marriage yeah of course i found it very disturbing i have some problems with it but what you let i think anyone who is listening to us now would have seen this right so i'm i'm going to have spoilers here and i hope you <laughs> don't mind and if you haven't watched it just stop watching right now go watch the film and come back because what bhupati has done here is to the eyes of this woman show how caught one can get within one's personal life once you enter into marriage because in the traditional way of looking at it this woman has trespassed into another affair got caught to the husband officially apologized and she has been brought back to the family but the utter hell the family becomes not so much because it's the husband abuses her in the traditional way but abuses her in the i don't know one of the most coldest ways i have ever seen in film he doesn't sleep with her just once i think doesn't talk to her and says i don't forgive you you're here because of my daughter right and it's amazingly cold um, cold treatment right that was my interpretation but i go get to the problem soon bhupati do you want to add anything to that no thank you thank you for it's fine it's better uh, that you talk much about our film uh, yeah so okay so the i let's like now um let me first ask you a question before we get into my my critique of it why why did you choose as a man to tell the story of a woman like this was this wait wait hold on was this also protest bhupati were you protesting about was this also resistance to something were you also protesting about something is this also uh, resistance cinema yeah uh, actually uh, the uh, problem i am facing once you uh, ask this kind of questions i mean i mean actually i'm i'm really i mean i'm really uh, i mean uh, feel uh, much more stressful uh, once i talk about my film honestly honestly because all the uh, so all of, i'm the, sorry yes but i did warn you we are come we are going to yeah, interrupt yeah. you but i have to face this uh, situation yeah. uh, i mean i have faced also uh, worse worse situations than yourself <laughs> yeah you are a <laughs> much more better version so um, uh, i don't know whether it is a protest or not uh, madhubashini honestly but uh, personally uh, i am someone who always uh, protesting and resisting uh, for uh, uh, injustice uh, things i see in all around the uh, all around the society and uh, even in my family and even with my friends most of my friends knows i am someone who express uh, 
so quickly and sometimes too quickly uh, so uh, for things and uh, so uh, i heard several stories and i uh, experienced them uh, those uh, things uh, by myself also i'm not married but uh, i so, i saw these things by my eyes and i heard and i Uh, lived i have lived with uh, one of few of my friends uh, who have faced similar situations both men and women so i gathered all these experiences and i mixed all these things some of uh, i as an example uh, some of my feelings and some of my experiences i uh, 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 i uh, injected uh, those into the uh, woman character in myself dimiti Uh, some of my parts are inside dimiti though she is a woman and uh, some of my parts are uh, inside sachitra the main character protagonist uh, uh, bim uh, uh, acted by bimal jaykodi and samadhi lakshiri so it's really hard to separate those things i mean i am not an uh, passive uh, external uh, person who have created characters i am inside those characters and myself yeah. is there The Likewise. question is a very traditional question a woman might ask you, Bupa, yeah. at this point, and I'll, I'll keep it a traditional question. As a man, and you made it the the frame. It was framed through the woman's eyes, technically. Yeah. Did you feel? Why would you feel so comfortable thinking that you would know how she feels? Because, I mean, of course, men can. I inhibit male characters most of the time in my novels. when i write but you inhabit a woman so did you not feel insecure doing that or did you think you no no even philosophically and politically i am strong because especially once you comes to aesthetics i don't think uh, madhubashini even as an example do i know myself very well i don't know myself question is, can you me? can you be sure of knowing how a woman feels that was my question uh if uh, if uh, art making is that kind of a rational thing nobody can make a film or a novel like this no as an example if you are making a, a story about a killer serial killer or someone do you have to take the experience empirically do you have to kill a person right no so someone can ask uh, how do you know a uh, uh, mind setup of a serial killer okay. uh, if you are Right. Okay. So I'll tell you the reason why I asked you. you. I'll I'll tell you yeah. the reason why I asked you, and this is yeah. where yeah. I, I mean I could absolutely be wrong, Bupati, because I am looking at it subjectively. No, the no, way I, I, I love to hear your right. comments. Okay, love so at people. every point after every single abuse, she goes and abuse is a very weird term to use because that abuse is abs- she, he never hits her, never yeah. scolds her, but just ignores her completely and kind of a symbolic her, torture. Yeah. Yeah, Symbolic and cuts process. off, cuts off all links. She, I mean, I, I would locks the phone up, locks the home phone, right? These are and every time this happens, I am like, why are you taking this? Right now, easy for me to say with my privilege and my education, I can walk out. Say I can, but then you did not depict her as a very helpless woman either. She has enough finances and all that. She comes back. right she never like i i can't imagine someone in that situation not walking out permanently because even your last scene is of her looking at photographs and not and i'm like okay he comes again he'll go back again for me that did not make sense how would you again it's my privilege talking but i get that but you did not put diniti also in a very underprivileged position right but that kind of spinelessness in a way i found it baffling because if you had put her into some kind of uneducated context or helpless context or poor context many women unfortunately have to go through that agony because they don't have a choice right her choice was whether to kill herself so for me that was a bit difficult to handle because even the last scene was okay the last scene was of the marriage it was a back 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 shot no but the, she goes back home and looks at albums again right and doesn't look very devastated anyway the only thing i think she won't come back is the taking of the cup she bundles the most precious thing she has and takes it away so i feel okay now she's not going to come back to a house that doesn't even have that symbol right so i get it but i found it baffling that she would take that load of crap and still be a kind of person who comes back that was the personal problem i had that was one of it 
what how would you answer that it's again subjective huh? you don't even have to you can say yeah, yeah. that version and be done with it yeah 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 uh, unfortunately film is done film is the film yeah no, so no, and, i want uh, to comment on it yeah yeah so uh, i can't I, i don't know whether my answer helps you or not but i'll try to uh, mm-hmm. but uh, my approach was uh, madhubashini uh, as an artist uh, and as a screenwriter and as an observer uh, as a person uh, i have seen and i have experienced uh, and not personally i have seen uh, the same stereotype and same uh, i mean uh, qualities that you were mentioning about my character uh, same thing same scenario uh, much worse uh, situations much worse than the film and i honestly i don't understand honestly i don't understand why that uh, uh, that woman uh, keep uh, not protesting i mean without any resistance why would she tolerate why, why could she she tolerate i i don't understand actually uh, madhubashini that's the reason i made this film because i don't understand it i i will never make a film uh, about a particular theme or a particular uh, proposition which i uh, fully understand or if i have an answer i won't make personally i won't make an art piece if i can analyze it perfectly if i have an answer i won't make a, a piece but uh, i only made this film because i really didn't understand what that woman was a particular woman and that's there were many like that's a good answer bupati i mean i i respect that and i see why you had to do just that as an but also just but also it's interest. out it's out there bupati the problem with art is so again we come to this huge dichotomy does art have to have a message or is art art right so yes. again again let's not get there but let's let's dis- discuss on that so there is this woman character looking at her would other women feel empowered i mean not that you should make films to make women feel empowered but my question is at the end of it i'm like what is there to admire about dignity except utter high levels of tolerance and not telling the man this is i mean she keeps saying it's wrong but you know he he keeps being he keeps being entitled to further to further exploit her and he says openly i want a mother for my child that's it yeah right and she, and see the love of the child i can imagine that as fact when she took the child also when she went so that could be sorted out but empowerment for a man like that shown like that Are you see the natural the, thing as if it's a natural thing without telling him you know uh, you see man's character as an empowerment to no you are you by showing him that and not making dignity fight is uh-huh. empowering a character like that that's my point uh-huh. Uh-huh. as if as if you say this is uh, what our society is this is what you take so again the dichotomy should you have a message or not but the fact is you empower garbage like that excuse my word crap like <laughs> that in the man by not challenging him and he's never challenged right he's not challenged by the girl's parents he's not challenged by the boy's parents as if this is what our culture expects marriage to be which honestly is one of the worst things which you showed on screen odd worst things odd worst things and by not anyone challenging this completely i know you try to show him being upset as well right but by no one challenging him aren't you then empowering this narrative as the way things are it may be the way things are what you saw but aren't you as an artist also then meant to she does leave but you don't make it clear whether she comes back or not right my question is that are you then empowering this very abusive narrative as normal Uh, i don't know i think uh, honestly uh, spectators should uh, uh, find their own answers and uh, uh, the only thing i can uh, mention you is uh, this film was uh, been screened uh, many places i mean it was screened officially at the theaters also film theaters in 2019 uh, 
and before that in um, several sri lankan film festivals and international film festivals and i was able to participate some of these uh, foreign festivals also and at the same time local festivals also and local screenings also so i got a vast range of comments vast range of comments vast range of ideas uh, totally different to something uh, you uh, saying uh, i mean even like, from like women what, Bhupati? give me some uh, like uh, some of some women some very liberal and some uh, very uh, 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 one example very liberal and very open very powerful very independent women uh, the women they said some of them very few some of them said they feel really uh, sympathetic about the male character and uh, i have uh, done much more things to uh, the uh, diniti and uh, you are making the side you are uh, i mean uh, they they were blaming me like uh, you uh, you were i mean it's injustice to do that in a film very opposite way what you were saying that you are taking uh, very uh, i mean openly uh, women's uh, side in that film like it's very interesting one of the reasons when you when you gave me that film and you also sent said you want to see some reviews i said no because i want to yeah. form my own opinion of it so yeah. And my uh, point all is, the comments also in uh, most of the comments are also in YouTube also. There were a lot of comments. Yeah, and a lot so of I yeah, yeah, I found it interesting, and that's why I thought, uh, like, once you resist, it's you know, I don't think you can be politically correct, no matter yeah. where you stand. Yeah. You'll be, you'll be, you'll be angering somebody at some yeah. angle because the world is such. I I don't like to I don't like to answer you with my film. I'll give you an answer which uh, given by Christoph Kislowski, my favorite filmmaker. which uh, much um, i mean uh, my, uh, little similar to this situation he he screened his film uh, uh, decalog 5 called a short film about killing at the khan film festival uh, yeah, yeah, basically the it's uh, available online if you like to watch it i it is much more cruel and much more violence and much more worse a film than my my film in physically also there were two deaths actually there were two murders one was done by the one done by a murderer and it was true to her after that murder happens inside the film i feel a lot of uh, audience a lot of people might find this uh, protagonist this, this character is someone first we have seen in our life that even his face and everything was so i mean true to her and uh, something worse we have seen even myself at the first screening i was i was around uh, 18 or 19 years old when i was seeing that film i hate that man i hate that man personally and i didn't want to watch continue the film either it was so disturbing and even the kanfil festival jury 1998 1988 they have uh, gone out they have said we can't watch this film and organizers have kindly invited to watch until uh, it get over it's get over so later on he seen how that person get the verdict and how that person uh, got into the capital punishment and he shows that brutal capital how a brutal capital punishment happens and what the protagonist says as his last words to his lawyer i i don't i want to i don't want to repeat it here i invite you to watch the film so at the festival uh, some person uh, some uh, press i mean journalist or someone has asked kislowski are you justifying are you trying to justify a killing and are you trying to take the side of the killer are you trying to make sympathy to the killer and um, justify that thing what kislowski's answer was i was actually i was i was totally against the first uh, murder as well as the second murder so I hope I have given my best answer for you. Yeah, you have. I mean, I, I get that, but I also wanted to tell you it's a very good film, uh, Bhupati. My criticism wasn't about thank your you, work you. of art. It, it's a good film, and also it puzzles me because Diniti is such a complex character. Even under lockdown conditions, she still wants to talk to her uh, person. It what disturbed me and, more. And, and I want to ask you one thing. And I I don't I want to ask you one thing. Don't you see? Don't you? Uh, if you are not, uh, just be honest. Uh, don't she violate each and everything uh, other than the official legal marriage? 
as he wants. It, as he, as he it, is, it as depends he. on the size of the man's ego. Mm -hmm. For me, the it was such a depiction of how complete men egos are. They have to be the center of attention. Marriage means no, you pay your attention to me. And uh, beside all these things, beside oh, all these oh. things, I want to ask you. Beside all these things, I want to ask you. Haven't you seen some people are uh, uh, acting and behaving very rationally, and uh, which we? Of course, no. Yeah. But the, the point is, uh, Bhupati, it's not. See now, the, that's another ethical question. How serious yeah. you should you take extramarital affairs? Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. if you take. Open marriages like um, who's a guy who slapped somebody, Jada and uh, Will Smith. Ah, yes. Just like exactly. that, where they have openly, it's an open marriage. So we don't have that in Sri Lanka, right? Yeah. But the fact is, then are you questioning monogamous marriage as being logical? And if somebody is to transcend that limit, how bad should the man's ego be to consider it a personal insult to him? You know, okay. it's all about ego, no, Bhupati? Definitely. How dare you look at somebody else when I am there? So for me, the egoistic and and it's it's so ingrained in Sri Lankan society. Obsession, obsession. It's ingrained. If my wife goes out, it's an insult to me, my personal ma my my maleness, right? Honestly, you want to beef somebody in the face. Okay? Totally agree. Yeah. So totally the, the, the egoism of the husband. Who thinks before because I married you and you signed a paper with me, your whole world now therefore should be me. When I say it like that, Bhupati, does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, a lot. That's what I'm saying. That is that is and equally, equally, women can say because you married me, your whole attention should be on me. This is what monogamous marriage is, you know. So my my question is, it's still what you showcased was an absolute eg egoism, which is built into the marriage system, right? And that's the thing. So a woman then requiring not to flirt or not to have an affair. On, and I'm very puzzled because at one point when he says, you slept with the man, she's shocked. Maybe she didn't. Maybe yeah. she did, right? Maybe yeah. it was just telephone conversations or a close friendship or whatever. But men would consider that a threat to not the marriage, their own extremely fragile ego. Right. This is this is what I'm also trying to uh, tell. Yes. So you think uh, you think that uh, most of the spectators uh, accept uh, the approach of the male protection? I'm sure Sri Lankans would. Uh -huh. and then the questions of an artist is then do I cater to it more? Yeah, we are quite sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure most people would find anything wrong, and that's the sadness of it, Bhupati. So that's Actually, what I'm this saying. Film, this film is already screened. Yeah. Uh, and it's very interesting. Uh, I have received uh, personally and publicly many comments and many yeah. and so, some of uh, them, uh, all more, most of them are in, available in YouTube also. I'm glad. So I, invite and, and this I, also. I invite you to I invite you to go through though. At least, at least you are oh, confident. I, of audience. Of course. No, very, very interesting because everyone has a right to an opinion and because poor you were caught, yeah. you were caught to me Definitely. like personally here. But that was one of the things I, I noticed and it doesn't take away from the film. It's a very yeah. good, very seriously thought out film and the way you got the claustrophobia is amazing because you could, you could hear you and, and, and this woman is so sexually, you know, bubbling over. And you could see that with the, the three wheel and that's, that, that particular trait is considered very bad in our culture, you know, and a you know, bad woman. And as, as you know, all these things. So you, think, then, you, think, you think the film text doesn't challenge that, yeah? No, that's what I, that's my problem with you, uh, 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 Beautifully shown, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> the problem is I didn't see a challenge. So, which, which is again fine, but then, so when I don't see a challenge, I'm looking for misogyny also. Is there an inherent dislike for women then in this? So again, I'm and my, my honest, honestly, my honestly, my intention is this kind of discussions to uh, provoke, to provoke and uh, okay. to uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I no, think and that... also remember my complete subjectivity. Yeah. Again, yeah, yeah. Really, you're all yeah. subjective, and but I do want to say that you know that kind of how much did that movie cost? It's very well done. 
was it a very expensive yeah. film uh, unfortunately 12 million 12 million that's the thing even for that no so amazing the fact that you all did it and you know very minimalistic. So, yeah very minimalistic yeah. yes and let's get the produ- producer and like there's so much work had gone in yeah. and i yeah, i, I think, uh, so you are going absolutely to absolutely good acting also who are these yeah. people uh, you can rec- you can introduce them uh, bupati uh, yes uh, the uh, the guy in the beard is my, uh, one of my uh, my good friend uh, malita goda the mm-hmm. one who i mean the dark shirt is is, is that uh, the the son of the famous photographer yeah lal hagoda lal hagoda of, no uh, wonder it was of, beautifully done yes yeah. lal hagoda uh, is my teacher my photography teacher yeah. and he is uh, uh, someone who, uh, who uh, changed my life when i was a teenager i remember you mentioning him in the last interview yes yes and uh, malita and me were in the same school at ashok yeah. vidyalaya yeah. maradana so okay. long friendship so he is the director and the uh, uh, person who in white shirt the dop director of photography a veteran cinematographer md mahind pala yes. who have worked with uh, veteran filmmakers like this abey sekar uh, prasanna vitanage uh, and many filmmakers yes. uh, so he is a teacher actually and we glad uh, he accepted our invitation to uh, shot his first digital film with us uh, so uh, other cast was, uh, it's so superbly done and, and this is the this is the actress right who did such a yeah. good job of uh, yeah. and you know she she did it so realistically just like the i mean all the actors were super um and she yeah. did it so realistically um, what's her name uh, bhupati uh, she is samadhi laksiri she is mm. a very famous uh, theater actor a very veteran uh, theater actress but mm. this was uh, her first uh, film first feature film she mm. has been take part in several minor characters in several other films mm. but uh, even not a i mean secondary character but uh, this was her first uh, main role uh, and uh, she did a uh, great dedication uh, rather than the payment she got i mean it's nothing uh, the payment uh, she got nothing uh, compared to her dedication i really Absolutely. really respect and, and it showed i think everybody was so utterly committed to yeah, especially lakshman yeah lakshman men i personally really enjoy yes. his yes uh, and you had music. veterans no you had kaushalya chamila lakshman yeah. and you had veterans just coming in Nothing. and it was very yeah. well done so my like if i were not to have you here if you had asked me of the opinion so it's a good film bupati and i'm like so proud of the fact that you know Thank we you. have that quality i would also like like to analyze it in different ways too because i have you in front of me poor you so that i can <laughs> ask you why and why and why so that most obscene questions also yeah <laughs> most most obscene questions also thank Absolutely. you yeah. so give me forgive me so that i i since i get no, this no, chance no. of I'm, I'm having yeah. you in front I of me and also abhuti i know there's a huge young crowd like you before we end for cinema that is completely dedicated but at the rate we are going at the rate sri lankan economy is what hope is there like your film cost 12 million right and here we are looking for couple of you know rupees to survive what hope do we have will we ever get to a state i don't know we had a golden age of cinema also no what has happened why did that die was tv part of it and what happened to us technically and where are we going what do you think yeah first of all uh, thank you for for recognizing me among youngsters but i am not younger anymore i am 40 years <laughs> so for a 52 year old that's young okay so please <laughs> <laughs> i i i remember once ashok handagama said that uh, we are going to be younger filmmakers until lester going uh, going to be no, uh, that that's a very good point no because sri lanka is quite famous for starting with our rulers <laughs> <laughs> not getting young people groomed for yeah. you know for taking over but at least in your in your your field you actually have young people either in camera yeah. they are being Long. automatically trained right i think the worst case scenario is politics where they make sure the oldest keeps i mean take rani not take anyone they are you know but so there's no one there young people. exactly there's no one young they are to take their place nobody if anybody has a chance of being young they'll be bumped off at some point yeah. anyway let's not get there but uh, in this cinema like where would be go bupati are there young people younger than you who are there who can come up i know there are people like art directors like you know bimal dushant and all there are 
all that, but in direct, uh, in screenwriting, where where are we standing right now? What's the scenario? A lot of a lot of uh, young blood, uh, young talented uh, young blood, uh, working on. Unfortunately, they are uh, struggling to come into film industry. Uh, at the moment, they are trying to do some com TV commercials, TV channels. They are practicing. They are making short films, even out of mobile phones. So a lot of filmmakers, even I don't know them personally, a lot of filmmakers, a lot of directors, a lot of DOPs, a lot of editors, uh, a lot of actors uh, who comes out of theater and uh, television and a lot of actors. Unfortunately, I don't, as I mentioned earlier also, I don't, unfortunately, I don't see any young uh, screenwriters, even in short filmmaking, uh, we don't identify someone who doing only screenwriting like that. Uh, I think I, I try to encourage and I try to promote screenwriting uh, people to become uh, only, to, to do only screenwriting professionally, to read and to work hard and uh, become a professional writer. So that's something lack. Other than that, all the young blood is there. The only uh, lack of thing is, as usually, once you come to cinema, not only in Sri Lanka, as uh, you take in Pakistan, in India, uh, Nepal, mostly in South Asia, and even in China. Uh, I know some of... Uh, I mean, my generation people, person, so foreign friends, which I have been, I mean, I've met uh, in festivals and those things. So they are also struggling. They are also struggling. After the 2008 uh, global economic crisis, there have a lot of uh, lack of fundings and cut of fundings in even European uh, funding lines also in production companies and festivals. And uh, even um, after Corona, none of us knows the situation, even no reports. So a lot of uh, crisis and at the same time, a lot of black money and money laundering things were happening. It is not something new to cinema, uh, Madhubashini, even in Sri Lanka, even in America, and even in India. India uh, especially, no? India especially. especially. There's a lot of especially. black money in the Bollywood. As, as an example, I, I can uh, mention something statistically. Uh, if you take, uh, I, as I said you earlier, there are 250 Bollywood film making per year average. Uh, but out of uh, 250, only 20 films covering at least the budget, 20 films. What happened to other 230 Bollywood films is not a problem. That is the black economy, uh, <laughs> the background of the black economy in India. So anyway, uh, so money laundering and all these things happening. So there can be uh, opportunities uh, if you take all the uh, moral things out of your mind there can be opportunities uh, film history has come through like that unfortunately or fortunately so unless uh, uh, black money thing money laundering thing other than that uh, it's if it's really hard to find a producer even comes to black money they are interested about the mainstream cinema popular cinema not about the alternative or art house cinema so it's really hard but uh, what happens and what happening in Sri Lanka is the filmmakers are so I mean they have a huge courage and they have they are so confident about filmmaking and they are so passionate I, not only me there are a lot of filmmakers they are so passionate and they don't give up they wait yeah uh, Ashoka Handagama just brought Alboroda out you yeah. know and yeah. this is this is the thing I wish well, I wish there was investment. I know now the government is gone and you can't really have yeah. money, but investment of belief in our art. Right? For example, I think your film will be really well received if the English dubbing version goes or if it goes internationally. There is no way that we no, can not show the dubbing. It. Not yeah. the dubbing. Uh, usually uh, for foreign films, they use the subtitle version. And it's dubbing gone all over? Anymore. Yeah. Sorry. Has it gone all over Bhupati, your film? No, unfortunately, it's it's a huge market, uh, Madhubashini. Rarely, Sri Lankan film finds a, a commercial release out of the country, very rarely. Uh, we have uh, received very good, uh, I mean, uh, average kind of uh, good responses in international film festivals. Uh, I'm not much interested about film festival power block, uh, but as a market, uh, we, was, uh, we were managed to go to major film festivals uh, at that time both Montreal International Film Festival in Canada and uh, BFI London Film Festival in uh, UK, mm. Great Britain, and uh, many a few other, uh, America, uh, even in uh, Indonesia, uh, several film festivals, the uh, English dub uh, subtitle version. And uh, there was a French subtitle version also of our film, uh, which we needed at the uh, Montreal Film Festival. There was a huge uh, French audience at Montreal. Uh, 
most of the filmmakers knows that uh, there was a French uh, kind of, uh, I mean, audience in, usually they ask for <coughs> French subtitles. So uh, nobody dubbed anymore. It's kind of old fashioned thing in cinema. Okay. We are, uh, each and every film used, even Parasite, it was been dubbed. It was subtitled into English or some other language. So we have all the subtitle version. And in Colombo, we screened the subtitle version because most of the foreigners, sometimes foreigners, sometimes Tamil people, they come to theater. So uh, PVR, uh, Regal, and some of the Colombo theaters, we screen the subtitled version, even though some uh, Sinhala uh, audience find it disturbing with the English subtitles, we decided to screen in subtitles. But uh, rarely Sri Lankan film get international sales. Uh, some of the Vimukti Jasundaras, most of the Vimukti Jasundaras films, and recently Jude Ratnam's uh, film got well received, uh, a documentary film, which was nominated at the Cannes Film Festival for Camera the Hour Prize, uh, really known in Sri Lanka, especially a documentary. It is the Tamil language film uh, took part uh, in competition in a major festival for the first time in the world history. What's, as the, name? I know. What's the name? Uh, Demons, uh, Demons in Paradise. Demons in Paradise, a documentary film. Uh, it is the only, even uh, Indian Tamil film hasn't take, took part, as I know, in a major film festival in competition section, in a competition I section. I see. So it's a historical uh, event. Uh, uh, Sri Lankan, uh, we are a small country, of, uh, yeah. especially Tamil filmmakers, they have a huge challenge from. Hollywood and Tamil market rather Tamil than mm. single film market. Yeah, so yeah. complex situation. Yeah. Complex situation. And you have hope though that we will Maybe, yeah. at, the moment also, at the moment also, I can show you, uh, I'm rewriting uh, my new script. Uh, this is the script. It's already printed. So uh, this is the third draft and we are working on it. And at the same time, we are working on a documentary film. We have already shot it. Unfortunately, no funders for it. Uh, we have done a documentary film about Sri Lankan Tamil cinema. So I invite uh, someone, if yes, someone would like to uh, donate uh, for that kind of a film. We are only uh, having lack of uh, post-production funding. We have already shot it. So uh, we Those have- kind of historical research would be so important as we go yeah. ahead, you know, when we look for peace or whatever reconciliation that we forget yeah. how closely yeah. knit that, but now uh, there is a, now there is a good uh, trend and uh, uh, even your with your team uh, resistance uh, now we have kind of alternative documentary practice with uh, kind of a resistance to uh, dominant themes likewise yes. dharmapuri bandaranayaka made two versions of documentaries about sri lankan cinema it's not a particular i mean typical uh, uh, narrative uh, history of sri lanka it's a the, it's Dharmasiri Bandar Naika's commentary on Sri Lankan cinema. So Sri Lankan history, cinematically, cinematically, documentary. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. It Sri was Lankan screened several times. Cinematically. Okay. Yeah, cinematically. And Dharmasena Patiraja made a documentary film regarding Sri Lankan ethnic issue, issue uh, as a documentary road movie called uh, Searching Search for a Paradise or something like in the title, uh, shot by Shanna Desha Priya, beautifully cinema, beautiful cinematography. And it's kind of a docudrama, Shana, Shana White, it's a docudrama, as I mentioned you earlier. Yes. Some, uh, some parts are dramatized and some parts are really shot. One thing I'm aware because of my own research for my doctoral thesis is how much artists in fiction or in yeah. most other genres resist, us, resist the dominant ideology. That was yeah. propagated right throughout post-independence Sri Lanka. And it's, it's kind yeah, of exactly. awesome to know that yeah, people yeah. are talking about it openly. Because that's not what mass media shows us. It's yeah, because uh, exactly, because uh, once you come to cinema, all the most of the Sri Lankan documentaries have been shot by the government film. There are veteran filmmakers, Lal, Lal uh, uh, not Vikramarachi, Lal, uh, I can't remember the surname. Uh, there was a very veteran filmmaker and uh, Pragna Somehetti Arachi, Dharma Sena Patiraja, Vasanto Besegara, Les James Piris, uh, even Vimti Jaya Sundara, Sudat Mahadi Ulava. There were many filmmakers have done documentaries to government film in it because there is the only funding way. But later on with the new uh, social movements, NGOs and other funding agencies, uh, directors have um, chances to manage uh, express uh, their uh, original authentic ideologies to filmmaking with uh, challenging the, as you said, challenging dominant uh, um, uh, ideologies. So they have done it. They are, uh, luckily, there are 
and document alternative documentaries, not the government film in documentaries, propaganda type documentaries, alternative documentaries. Uh, likewise, we have uh, made a documentary film on Sri Lankan Tamil cinema, local Tamil cinema. Again, uh, as you mentioned, uh, one, once we were doing our film, it's about a woman, but uh, uh, both the director and writers are male. And we have done a documentary film about Sri Lankan Tamil cinema. Both the director and uh, uh, writer are not Tamils. So likewise, I think that we have that right. Unless we are not harming, we have that right. And if we have harmed, someone can critique that openly uh, once you come to art criticism. So uh, I think uh, it's very important to have alternative documentaries and documentary tradition in Sri Lanka. And it's rising up. Luckily, it's, uh, uh, we are having uh, positive waves. I'm so glad. And also your comment, everyone has a right to critique. One disturbing trend I saw, Bhupati, which I, I will say without mentioning Hope it's not me. Hope it's not me. No, I wouldn't have done this with you if had it been you. That criticism is personally counteracted by those criticized. Because no, if I critique a film, it's a public's right no, to critique and then to go behind that person saying this, 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 I always found problematic. I will just leave it at that. Because even if I, I was- think that, I think the filmmakers should take it as it's, it's a compliment. I mean, it's a nice yes, response. But yes, yeah. it can become a very personal, bitter fight also. As I have true, true. seen on social media in recent times, criticism is not taken, it's taken very personally. I watched you while I was critiquing you. I don't know whether it's just because we are both on live camera right now. You took it pretty well. You didn't take yeah, it personally. So that's the thing. And I wish that because I could be completely off the handle. I could be completely wrong. But once um, once you, of, I may have been ethically wrong in getting you for an interview and then targeting you. Like, no, that's totally okay. Targeting. Please, no, but yeah, my please. point is I have seen a lot of pushback from the directors and the filmmakers fighting the critics or in public. That I found very problematic because that is to shut down something rightfully who it rightfully should exist and i honestly found that problematic in many recent incidents because then people will just yeah people will just be quiet What's the i point? agree 100 yeah. uh, uh, mostly i'm a film critique rather than a yeah. screenwriter i have worked as a critic for 20 years this is my mm. 20th anniversary actually 2022 so uh, i have faced this thing extensively Madhubashini, uh, even I can't, I don't like to name those people, but even veteran and very famous leaders, after I'm doing, making a critic, they have been, uh, they haven't faced me and they don't talk to me. Yeah, that, like, that happens, I think, and sadly, maybe because we're a small island, Bhupati, yeah. I'm not too sure how I'll take criticism either. I'm sure I'll, I'll be all my claws bad. We take criticism pretty badly and we take it very personally. Yeah. So, and not to be biased, not to be biased, but I see uh, in uh, people in my generation, mm -hmm. uh, they take uh, criticism uh, very openly. And some of the inviting me as premiers, uh, and come and uh, do your best and uh, yeah. do your worst criticism like that. They invite yeah. me to premiers also. Yeah. Like, uh, to name them, Vimukti Jayasundara. I have criticized Vimukti Jayasundara very hardly, mm -hmm. uh, even last week at the bakery uh, space. Mm -hmm. uh, but he is very comfortable. And even uh, yeah. next morning, making me good morning and all these things in chat yeah. and uh, right. Chatra, Veeraman, Chatra Veeraman who has done Aloko Dupadi I have criticized that film very hardly but he is a very loving and uh, very uh, close friend to me so I think uh, we have to build that uh, culture that tradition in Sri Lanka. I'm glad if that happens because even in everything even in literature we take criticism in a very personal level most of the time we uh, sorry Bhupati we know who the people are no we are such a in, in <laughs> community. We know everybody. We know the writer, we know the critic, we know. So it's very difficult to be objective. So that yeah. is also a very Sri Lankan thing. Yeah. We kind of know each other. Yeah, and, and, and that's why and that's why I got surprised once you were uh, at the first interview, when you, you selected me, I was really surprised because I'm having a very bad career. So, uh, someone like you, why have you selected me? Because I don't have such a good, uh, I mean, good name well, in the industry. When I, when I first picked you, it was to show how knowledgeable you can be without a university education. And honestly, yes, <laughs> that was a, but then, you know, and I and also had followed your career. I do uh, 
my research involves me looking at how Sri Lankan art is moving. And honestly, the, the film deserved, it deserved attention and it deserved critics. So all that. Thank you. So can I then thank you for your time again? And we are going to repeat this in Singhala, probably a little later. I'm sure you're tired. It took us quite long. And uh, so I'll air both this, I'll air this today itself. And I'll come back to you for the Singhala uh, interview. Thank you very yeah, thank much, you. Again, Thank you for inviting me the second time. For the second time, was okay. <laughs> Bye. Okay, you.